and usually we have a little bit of music in the background but today i didn't feel like doing that because the royal wedding let's talk about that royal wedding for a second now the royal wedding didn't have a crazy intro like we do so what i want to do is announce that we have a better intro <laughs> than the royal wedding so hit it do 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 my hangover wasn't as bad as last week, mm. so I'm doing great, actually. Doing fantastic. Yeah, you got a little bit uh, refreshed last night, heard some stories. Yeah, was a little bit refreshed. <laughs> Had some uh, cookies and milk. Ah, cookies and milk. Yeah, and it was a good night. Uh, how about you? How about, what would you do last night? Anything interesting over this long weekend? Uh, you know, I also had a pretty good night. When I uh, spent my time in Virgil, actually this weekend, saw a demolition derby, a couple of them. And then um, you usually participate in those uh, demolition derbies, don't you? Yeah, I have a couple times, but not this week. This week I was just went. I was a spectator. Actually, you know what I saw there? Uh, former former host of um, Chronic Aggression, Cannibal Cam. Cannibal Cam was there. Yeah, I didn't get the chance to talk to I him. I saw the picture of Cannibal Cam and Wayne Gates. Yeah, on the Facebook, <laughs> that big old mustache. Yeah, the mustache mayor. The mustache mayor. He's a good guy. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, so we watched some of that, and then we went to uh, me and a couple friends went and watched Infinity Wars. So finally. We've seen that movie, so we're probably going to talk about that a little yep, bit today. Yeah, I'm finally excited because, like, um, I, I say three weeks now. I've been basically saying to you every week is, Mike, have you seen Infinity Wars? <laughs> we can talk about it. <laughs> so we can finally talk about that, which is going to be exciting. We'll do uh, basically a whole bit on that. Um, also, a um, lot of new music today. Oh, yes. We, we, we don't have a guest. So, um, yeah, we were supposed to have a guest to uh, share the show with us today, but, um, you know. It's a long weekend. Yeah, long weekend. People got things to going on. It's mm. totally understandable. So we're going to reschedule that interview and get that going on um, with Kelly Pink, and he's going to be talking about all the shows going on uh, this summer for the um, like at the D tour and the warehouse and all that stuff. So that'll be exciting. Yeah. So instead, we brought to you a lot of new music. Let's run down the list of new music that we're going to play for you today. Let's hit them off with um, the first band we're going to our first skinless. We got new skinless. Yeah, for new, you. new skinless. That that album just dropped on May fourth, so we're a little late on it, but uh, still new. It's still new, and it's still crushes. I have a mm -hmm. really great quote. I'm going to really describe that album later on when we uh, get into that song. Also, uh, what else do we got going on? New graveyard. It's not as heavy, but man, it's got some uh, really good grooves and catchy elements to it. Speaking of some good grooves and catchy elements, that's not metal. New ghost. New ghost. Yeah, really excited about that um, and, because. Um, uh, it's been stuck in my head this whole weekend. Oh, really? <laughs> it literally has. Yes, I, I think so. At some points in the day, it just pops in my head. It's, it's a good one. They it's wrote a good one. It's a good I, song. Yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that because there's uh, a lot of people I can think will be disagreeing with us. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. I can, already, I can already smell it. Oh, yeah. I can like already... Like, I can yeah. smell the disdain in the air. Mmm, <laughs> 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 ghost. <laughs> I thought this was a metal show. <laughs> well, uh, we'll... Uh, We'll speak about that a little bit more. Papa Phil's in the video. Oh, yeah. More, more, more on that a little bit later. And also, one of my personal favorites at the moment, New Clutch. Oh, yeah, you got me into that. You showed me the New Clutch, uh, was it yesterday? Yes. And, I, yeah, I got into it. Uh, give me it was, the keys. Yeah, give me the keys, which is a cool, cool song name. And also, it's, um, it's very different, very structured, very differently, and I like it. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff going on with uh, that. Um, what else we got at the top of our head for new tunes? We got a lot. We just got a lot of tunes. Yeah, we do. Uh, I'm also going to bring in some of the bands that's going to be going on at the Vakken Metal uh, Battle June 9th. Mm -hmm. I brought in a band that will be playing there that uh, you actually got me into, and I found another song from these guys that I like. Right on. So. And also, we're going to be talking about the show from the Geekery this past Friday with Prism Mind, Lycanthro, Battered Egos, and uh, there was a third band, or fourth band. Last Rites. Last Rites. Yeah. I wasn't even at that show, and I know. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, I couldn't make it, so uh, I'm looking forward to you talking about it and, you know, giving a scoop, giving a rundown of what mm -hmm. happened. Yeah, uh, so. We got a big complaints section today, too, as yeah, well. I, I got some stuff to complain about. Joe's yeah. got some stuff to complain about. Yeah. So we got a packed show. So I think, Joe, we should hit it off, and let's crush these mother friggers. Yeah, we should. Hey, do you hear the what? music, by the way? It finally kicked there in. There it is. There it is. <laughs> it's, 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 
finally in. Now it's just in time for us to play some metal. <laughs> what are we going to start off with these uh, with these guys with? What are we What are we hitting them with? Well, we got a lot, and I want to do something that we something that we were supposed to play last week because there was a lot that we had last week. So we mm-hmm. got a lot of rollovers. Oh yeah, um, good rollovers. Yeah, and you know what, Metal Mike? Can I choose one of yours? Yeah, yeah, I really do. I want to choose. Uh, this band called Tungstra Mammoth. Oh, yeah. I think that's a cool <laughs> friggin' name. <laughs> and, uh, I want to hear what Tungstra Mammoth sounds like, because I haven't listened to them yet, and they've been on this playlist for about two weeks now. And, uh, yeah, let's start these guys out with some Tungstra Mammoth, see what that sounds like. And, um, yeah, Metal Mike, why don't you introduce this tune? What do we got right here? So what do we got over here? We got Kings and Queens by Tungstra Mammoth. Got a little bit of stoner rock there coming out of Canada. Oh, yeah. You heard of that country, Joe? No. Yep. You never heard of Canada? It's Canadian. Canadian? Canada? Canada. Canada. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, Pretty uh, cool band. <laughs> but, Ooh, I like the riff already. But uh, anyways, they're they're coming out of um, Montreal on Stoner Sludge or Deathbound Records. So uh, here's some Stoner Sludge, Tungusta Mammoth on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. The Swedish Riff Lords, Grand Magus, Hammer of the North on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. I'm pretty sure you gave me a CD of these guys one time. Yes, I did. Yeah, that was pretty sweet. And that was, that was what was Rick had written on the on the case. That's yeah, why yeah. I bought it. <laughs> yeah, like, that's a great marketing tool right there. You see that? Like, Whoa, who are these Swedish Riff Lords? Yeah, that's a sick title. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know. Yeah, these guys um they're kind of doom, kind of heavy metal mm. coming out of Sweden. Good stuff right there. And just before that was uh, Tungsta. Mammoth out of Canada. Yeah. yeah, out yeah. Of, uh, Montreal there with Montreal, the song right Kings on. and Queens. But we don't want you to go anywhere because uh, you might be skinless after the break. You're listening to Hammer Smash 103.7 FM CFBU. All right. It is here. New skinless on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. Coming off their album Sa- Savagery. The song is called Skull Session. They have a new uh, video for that. You can go check it out on YouTube. And uh, I just want to read a little something of uh, one reviewer said about this album. This album is designed to cave in the listener's skull with all the dignified grace of being beaten to death with a hammer. Here's new Skinless on Hammer Smashed, 103.7 FM. How does your skull feel after that one? Mm. Should be thoroughly beaten. You'll be speaking like Eugene from WWE. <laughs> <laughs> what a crazy storyline. That's, that's how he I got believe, the way he was. I can't believe they got away with that storyline. Triple H is like, you know why you talk like that, Eugene? Because I hit you with the sledgehammer. <laughs> you can, there's no way you can get away with that what now. What a story. What a story. <laughs> so, Anyways. Oh, boy. So, yeah, if, you, if you're talking like Eugene, it's because um, we did skinless. Yeah, yeah, it was some skinless. Or it's Triple H. <laughs> <laughs> that was Skull Sessions off the new album, Savagery. Yeah, very savage. Go check that album out. I've listened to it, you know, fully. At least, um, at least a good five to ten times now. I nice. lost track, but <laughs> is it, the, is it the new, um, the new? Ah, uh, uh, well, I'm, the name slipping my mind. Um, what, what what was the record that we listened to a bunch last summer that uh, we were hooked on for like a week or a week or two? Oh God! With um, uh, oh, it's tough because you know we get yeah. we get hooked on them so much. Why am I, uh, it was from Sepultura. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, Cavalier Cavalier Conspiracy. Conspiracy. (laughs) Psycho or is it Psychosis? Psychosis. Oh, my God. What an album. What a great album. (laughs) I can listen to that on my ride home. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Speaking of albums that we've been stuck on, an album actually I've been stuck on a lot, like before the Skinless album came out, was The Sciences. Oh. Totally. (laughs) Yeah, every day. (laughs) What a good album. (laughs) Enough about all these other different albums. we got to talk about something that I've been waiting to talk about for weeks now. I've been saying to Metal Mike every week, hey, have you seen the movie? And no, I've been getting no. And we can't talk about it because you can't ruin ruin Infinity Wars. But now we are going to ruin Infinity Wars yep. if you haven't seen it. Yep. It's been too long. You know, you know you've you had, had enough time by you now. You had your chance. You had your chance. This is our show. <laughs> yeah, it's our show. <laughs> we're going to talk about it now. Milo Mike has seen it. I have seen it. So we're going to talk about it. And um, everybody dies. <laughs> well, not everyone. <laughs> not everybody, but a lot of people, lot of die. people die. Yeah. Well, I think that I think everybody knows now at that point that a lot of people die. I think that's like because that's the main plot, like the main like 
big turning thing is um, Spider-Man dying. That was a, that was huge. A lot of millennials got upset about that one. Mm. I saw it in theaters, and uh, a lot so of people I. cried. Really? Did you get people crying? Um, no, actually, when I went to see it, uh, there wasn't a lot of people. I watched it in Welland uh, at like 10 at night. Oh, okay, yeah. See, so, I, I, every time I went, it was like kind of afternoon, so there was kids, and they were very upset. But uh, other than that, other than that whole big uh, ending scene, what did you think of the, act, the movie? Okay, so I believe the movie was good. I liked the movie. Uh, if I were to... I could talk about all the good things in the movie, but everyone knows the good things, and I'm going to criticize the movie a little bit, actually. Oh, yeah, for sure. Here's, um... Okay, first thing. Why couldn't Doctor Strange just literally put a portal underneath the Infinity Stones? Or Thanos, Thanos, in and, general. And, and then, Well, Thanos can teleport. You can see that he's teleporting yeah. or whatever, but... The stones. He could literally just send the stones anywhere. Why couldn't he just do that immediately before he acquires more of them? Hmm. You could have just done that. Yeah, I also read this theory that like, what? Remember how uh, Wong chopped off that one guy's arm yeah. through the portal? Like, why didn't they do that to Thanos' gauntlet? Yeah, right. Yeah, you know, I saw. A thing and then, the- why didn't? Why? First of all, where was Ant Man? And why didn't Ant Man shrink to the size of like you know an ant, crawl up his butthole? Well, they're, and they just, like expand himself. They, they did. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> wow. Wow, I've never heard that one before. But well, that's totally- amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> you could totally do that, and he would have won. Yeah. But they did mention at some point in the movie they, they, about Hawkeye and Ant Man being like with their families or something. Just you know, probably couldn't afford to have those two guys in the movie. But uh, they're coming back in the next Infinity War. And then, um, you know, I just felt the movie was good. It was just too long. Too long, really? I thought it was okay, dude. It was like two and a half hours, and it's like holy hell. Yeah, it was. It was uh, quite long, a little bit. What was a? It was the thing. What I liked about it because there were so many characters, right? And it's tough to give everybody their screen time. I feel like they delegated the screen time to everybody well enough. Mm -hmm. Of course, they gave Thanos the most. Some people I saw online like complaining, like a lot of. um, I hate to use this term, a lot of snowflakes Mm -hmm. on the internet have. um, been complaining like I wa- I literally saw some articles about like oh, this movie's too dark and there's too much evil in it. Well, you know what? I think that was amazing because this is something new. No one, there's never been a superhero movie where the focus has been on the bad guy. The well, villains. And you know what, too? It's like when you have that many protagonists, you can't be biased and choose just one. So exactly. You, yeah. And there's one antagonist, so obviously you're gonna put all your focus on this guy because they really want to get you to hate him. And he was really good. And you know what else was? Um, speaking, well, you made a good point about hating him. It was tough to hate him because mm, I know he was. Um, first of all, he's badass. But second of all, his motives weren't that evil. I really liked his plight. Yeah. I, I, found, I found myself during the whole entire movie going, honestly, I support him. You know who? <laughs> you know who would support him? I, I wouldn't be surprised if he talks about him in his next comedy special. George Carlin. <laughs> well, he's dead, but, I know, but, but he Bill, would support. He would, hundred percent. Are you kidding me? Oh, he'd be like on <laughs> Thanos' team. If he was alive, they would have got George. <laughs> George would have been Thanos. <laughs> he would, that would have been his dream, his dream one right there. His dream, <laughs> his dream role for sure. But um, another comedian I was gonna say is Bill Burr. Oh, every dude, every immediately. That's all he talks about, and everything <laughs> is about you know. Getting rid of the population. Yeah. He, he probably... Bill Burr would have eaten that roll up. Oh, for sure. But he, <laughs> he he's definitely going to like talk about Thanos at his next special or at some point. At some point, his podcast. Yeah, yeah. But, um, no, he, he was good. It was tough to hate because he wasn't your just classic evil villain. He had, uh, he had good motives. He actually wanted to save the universe by getting rid of a lot of people, yeah. which sounds horrible. But even like, if you think about it, he... Wanted to do it in a nice way. He's like, Which let me just snap my fingers so you crazy. all leave gracefully. It's because that's like an actual thing that we as a human race deal with. You know, like there's big conspiracies about, you know, the government messing with the water and using chemtrails to, you know, shorten life expectancy of certain people so that we can depopulate. And that's, what I'm saying is that it's basically like a huge conspiracy. Yeah, like all these different things that they're so basically using to kill us. That using the topic as like a main villain in a movie. Is very very dividing because you know there's going to be people who go that's genocide you can't do that mm-hmm. and then there's going to be people like us who are like honestly <laughs> <laughs> honestly like he's onto something <laughs> he is onto something yeah for sure and um, but I found it hard to hate him because I half agreed with, with his motives it was tough to hate him but uh, about what he did though um, there's a lot of theories going around that they're actually not dead when he snapped his fingers everybody gets trapped in the soul stone so maybe that's a thing. I don't know. That'll be maybe a way for the next movie. Because 
you know, it's a Marvel movie. There's no way they're all actually dead. They're, they'll definitely Imagine come. they don't make another movie. That's it. <laughs> That's it, eh? Is that, you know what I... I loved the ending because he just sat there and he's Very, like, um, like, what if that's it? Like, they don't make another one and then he just sits there. <laughs> <sighs> I did it. They make like an extended clip, like a 13 minute clip on, <laughs> on YouTube of just... him just sitting there. And he's like, hacking a dart. He's like, what do I do now? Yeah, uh, damn. Like, orders a pizza yeah. and then the pizza guy doesn't show up because he's <laughs> dead. <laughs> Shows up late, dude. <laughs> Shows up late. Oh, just... man. That's funny. Oh. But I, I did really like that scene. He just sat there. Yeah. And Ah, was, was single handedly, scene. man, best part of that movie, and we'll close with this, is Peter Dinklage playing a giant dwarf. That was awesome. That's that amazing. was so cool. He played a, a, a big dwarf playing giant. a giant dwarf. Yeah. Incredible. <laughs> it was. You that can't was, write that. That was really awesome. Well, they did write Helping it. out Thor and his awesome axe, Stormbreaker. Thor also was a one that stole the show for me as well. He did a, so many metal moments. Like when he came down out of the sky with Stormbreaker during that big Wakanda fight, the first thing that came to my mind was like the riff of Ride the Lightning. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, he was pretty metal, but uh, you know who stole it? Drax for me. Again. Oh, God, yeah. Again. He was so funny. <laughs> <laughs> where where, where, where is Gamora? I'll do you one better. Who what? is Gamora? I'll do you one better. Why, Why is Gamora? <laughs> <laughs> Apparently, he uh, that came off the top of his head. That was an unscripted line. Really? Yeah, yeah. Nice. Dave Batista, eh? what a guy. Yeah, what a guy. I was waiting for him to Batista bomb somebody or spine buster somebody. Mm. That would be a. Um, maybe we'll save that when he actually does that to Thanos. That would be pretty sweet. That would be bad. Because in the comics, they have to. They have to address that because in the comics, the Drax beats the crap out of Thanos. Really? There's a, yeah, there's a pretty solid, like, actual uh, big thing. Well, the whole reason J Drax was created was just to kill Thanos. Really? In, in the comics, that was literally his purpose, just to kill Thanos. So maybe they'll they'll tackle that and he will. Uh, he will make me happy and everyone else in the WWE universe and give Thanos a Batista bomb. That would be pretty awesome. <laughs> would be pretty sweet. <laughs> to say the least. Anyways, we're going to do this quick little commercial, and we're going to hit you with some metal that would be suitable for the Avengers Infinity Wars. Here we go. Coming off some Borealis on Hammer Smash, roll 3.7 FM. Some heavy metal out uh, from the West in Canada. And you got me into these guys. I remember you first mm -hmm. got me into these guys because... You know, we have a tough time with power metal. And, yeah, uh, I was on a quest to find a power metal were. band that didn't actually make me cringe, yeah, to be you, honest. You showed, uh, played a song, I think it was called... Uh, it was off this album, that same album. But uh, anyway, I, I, I'm slipping my mind of what it's called. But anyway, it was just really good. It, it, it had a good, uh, solid... Uh, I don't know. It's a good sound power metal. You know, a little je ne sais quoi about it. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was good. It's the, I, I really liked it, <laughs> you know? And uh, this is another one. It's called Sign of No Return by Borealis. And uh, you can catch those guys at the Vakken Metal Battle at um, uh, the Opera House in Toronto, June 9th. And we will, we will be there to go mm -hmm. see all these bands. And we're going to play you a couple bands each week from the battle leading up to the battle on June 9th. So we'll play you one more after the break. Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM, CFBU, some Centuries of Decay, uh, some, another winner that's going to be at the Vakken Battle, June 9th, the uh, final Vakken Battle. Just played you a couple bands out from uh, the East area. My mistake in a uh, correction, Borealis is not from the West, they're from the East. So two uh, bands uh, right over here, Borealis from Orangeville, Centuries of Decay from Toronto, representing Ontario for the Vakken uh, Metal Battle. And uh, I'm excited for that show, man. As am I. Uh, we're going to be there, and I think uh, it's going to be a, a crazy good show. I think every band is different, and I think they're, you know, they're obviously going to give it their all because a, lot's on, a lot of writing is on the wall for this one. Oh, yeah, for sure. Like, to play in Germany in front of one of the biggest ba metal bands in the world, that's a huge opportunity, so it's very exciting and for these guys. One of the largest amount of metal fans in the world, Yeah, too. they're going to be playing in front of a huge crowd, and, you know, they're representing Canada. Absolutely. Which is pretty, uh, it's exciting. So I'm excited to find out who's going to win, and uh, that's in a few weeks. So uh, we have two more Hammer Smashes, you know, leading up to that show. So we will play uh, two more bands next week. That's going to be it, because there's six in general. We and just if, you're, uh, if you're a gambling man... Start placing in your bets. We're going to have a poll coming up. Now, bet on up, bet on up. Get your prices in. Get your money in. Get your money in. Yeah, if you got only got one more week to get your money in, and we're going to bet on bands here. <laughs> we're not actually doing that. <laughs> nah, that would, maybe. Maybe on the side. Yeah, yeah, maybe, maybe on the just, side. Just cash Don't only. Don't tell anyone. Yeah, yeah. We're going to start taking yeah. bribes. Yeah, making out the cash only. Mm. But, uh, yeah, really excited for that. We'll get you two more bands at the Vakken Metal Battle that we'll be playing. And, uh, yeah, we'll air them next week on Hammer Smashed. You only get two. Two a week. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's it. That's all you get. Can't, you can't ask more of us. Yeah, yeah. What, what, what do you think we do? We're we on a radio show? We clean. And for what? <laughs> are you paying the bills in this house? <laughs> what kind of bills are you paying yeah, to be asking for more than two songs a week? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, that end, too, we have a lot of new stuff we got to get going on, too. So we got to get things rolling because we got some new songs we got to get, get on. Uh, we're going to get some new Ghost in Your Ears coming up next. But first, uh, Metal Mike wants to play me a tune. Yeah, so I found this band, another Canadian band coming out of Victoria, B.C., and they're called Sequester. And, uh... Very interesting stuff that I found here. The way I have it written down, my perception, perspective of this band is like soft ghost slash Pink Floyd, power metal, proggy metal. It's it's so interesting for me. Nice. The sound of this band, and I like it. All right, let, we'll, we'll, let, let's let's do it. We'll come off it. We'll give it. We'll give a little uh, rundown of it, and then we'll introduce some new ghost. So let's start out with uh, Sequester. Where do we go? Mm -hmm. The song is called Bloodborne. Is it Bloodborne or Bloodbound? Bloodborne. You got it. Bloodborne. Right out. Off the album Hermit. Sequester on Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM. Yeah, that song you heard was Sequester. The the band band is Sequester. The song is Bloodborne. And... uh, you, you you get what I'm saying now, right? So it sounds like it's it's heavy, but it's soft heavy. Yeah, no, I, I totally agree with you right there. And also, it had an atmosphere too yeah. that made it sound really creepy. You mm-hmm. hear the vocals that kind of sounded like they were like wandering in the distance. You made a good point too while we were listening to that song. We took a look at the artwork. Unfortunately, you can't see it right now, but uh, well, you can maybe, type it in your you Google. Can t- yeah, if you're listening on the internet or on your computer right now, just uh, yeah, type it in Google Sequester. The, the album's, album's called, called Hermit. Hermit, yes. Yeah, and. Um, yeah, you looked at we look at the album artwork. It's like, yep, that's what they sound like. Yeah, exactly. This, what you see is what they sound like. <laughs> yeah. Totally, and they, yeah, like you just hear the the vocals in the distance, have that cool atmosphere, and and um, I listened to the whole album. I think on Friday, and I just listened to the whole thing. Nice. And the whole album sounds like that. You know, the, all the songs are different, but the, they have that atmosphere about it, and it's a good album. Where it's heavy, but it's not. Yeah, it's, very good listen to, and it's like it's like listening to metal if you don't want to get like a headache. That's it's, like, it's like hangover metal. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, like things can still be metal and not be heavy. Mm. And I have a great example of that later on with some new music with um, a band called Graveyard. It, you know, it's not like heavy, but it's still metal. It's still, it's still got that. So, you know, you'll hear that later on. But right now you're going to hear some new metal. Not Link, Linkin Park or Limbiscuit. Limbiscuit <laughs> or I don't know any more new metal bands. But <laughs> no, you're not. You're not going to hear that. You're going to hear new ghost. Mm. And uh, this is when the listener goes, No, no. Ghost. I can feel the fuming out of people. Ghost isn't metal. And um, should we should we talk about this now before we play the tune? Yeah, sure. Yeah, because like, you know, I'm just sick of the ghost hate. Because, mm. you know, it's one thing if you don't like the band. That's fine. I've met people actually that don't like ghost. And they just, yeah, I don't like the vocals and this and that. Yeah, or that whatever. makes sense. Or, I don't like that. This That's like, understandable. And they've even said, like, it's good. Like it's good music, but he, they just they don't like it. Not the cup of tea. And that's totally fine. I've met metalheads like that, and that's uh, it's good to have an open mind like that. Everyone, you know, we like things, we don't like things. Yeah. But it's one thing to not like something because everybody else doesn't like it. Yeah. That's you know, it's not people fair. hate it's, on Ghost because at the moment it's cool to hate on Ghost. It's trendy to hate on Ghost. And if you hate Ghost for that reason, you're a friggin' dweeb. Yeah. You are a dweeb. Uh, yeah. I haven't heard, heard anyone use that word in a while, but I like it. I like <laughs> that you pulled it out for that segment. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, totally, man. It's just, it's not fair. And uh, I, I even said to you in a text, man, it's the same reason why people hate Metallica and yep. Godsmack. Yeah. It, it's cool to hate on them. If, you, if you're a person, I said this in reply, if you are a Metallica, or used to be a Metallica fan, or you're a metal fan, and you listen to the new Metallica album, and you think it's crap, then you are naive. Yeah, you're, you're, you're just, you're being a hater. You're just hating them because everyone else hates yeah. them. It's, it's, and chances are, you didn't listen to the album. Yeah, no, no, totally agree. And same yeah. thing with, dude, same goes with Ghost. The people that don't like Ghost are the people that don't, hasn't listened yeah. to a full album. I listened to Square Hammer. And yeah, I listened to Square Hammer on, on the radio and I didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. Do your damn research. You know what else, dude, you know what else I heard people say why they don't like Ghost? Is after looking at them, they say, oh, I didn't expect them to sound like this after looking at them. That's like, you know, they expect them to be this crazy, evil, Black satanic band. band. But that's what's cool about them. They don't sound like that. Exactly. And it, I don't know. It's They have a great live show. We've seen them live. They have a great stage presence. The yep. vocalist is, he's, you know, he's a very talented musician. Yep. It's unfortunate all that other crap went on with the band, but whatever. 
we, I, I think we've used this analogy before. It's like Bruce Springsteen, you know. He's the boss. He, he's, he's the, the guy boss. that's in the band, just like Toby S. Forge, Pop, um, yeah. Pop Emeritus. He's he's the boss. You're in his band. You're in his band, and that's that's just the way it goes. I guess they all they got new members, and um, you don't hear them complaining, do you? Yeah, you don't hear them <laughs> complaining. Yeah. yeah, there you go. That's yeah. for sure. Uh, one more thing too about Ghost Hate, um, because I've been going in the comments section a lot lately. You know who's been hating a lot of Ghost now lately on this um, new album? There's a lot of women. And you know why? No, no. Because Papa's looks ugly now. He does. He really does. He's got a really gross pencil mustache now, and his yeah. face is all droopy and old. Mm-hmm. And he's got like this, his this Pope look where his everything's all covered, and he just he doesn't look very flattering. And girls have been like saying really stupid remarks because you know the other one he looked all handsome with his hair t- back and nice well, clothes and that was the and theme of the, especially the last record that was the theme was well, like sex for satan yeah that was the, literally the whole theme of that whole last era of Ghost. and it was a lot midi a lot more medieval where it was uh, yeah. a good like it, it was the romantic era yeah. kind of was what he was saying and they're changing they're evolving they're they're a different type of Each band era of ghosts is had different it's like different eras in time and, yeah. and, and music and now I don't really know what it is now because the album isn't out. We're but, not there uh, yet. Yeah, we've only had a couple songs. So we've only had a taste. But that's that's a dumb reason again to hate a band just because right. what they look like. I've always stood by actually. I've always stood by the fact that I think ugly people make the best music. It is true. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, no, it's just you never see them. You, just, <laughs> you don't see them. <laughs> no, look at Maynard. Yeah, <laughs> look at Maynard. Man. <laughs> but I don't know. There's a lot of like, we can go on and on about the ghost hate. It's just. If you're one of those people that don't like ghosts because someone else doesn't like ghosts, just don't be that person. Go out on your own time. Listen to them. Take the time to listen to them. And if you don't like them because you don't like them, then that's fine. At least you'd, at least you'd listen. You know, that's the whole point of it. And, like um, Greta Van Fleet. I didn't like yeah. them. And then I listened to their record to make sure I confirmed that I didn't like them. And guess what? I didn't like it. But, dude, that, you still went out of your way. You took the time to go out and yeah, listen to the whole record. Yeah, you did. You, and you totally did, and you and you know that's what I'm urging. Uh, you know, you if you're listening, anyone out there that has never heard Ghost, go and you know give your time out there. Um, now moving into the next song, <laughs> which is funny because it's so unlike it's, any other Ghost song. It's so unlike any <laughs> Ghost song at all. And you know <laughs> After what? All of that. There's probably going to be a lot of hate yeah. from this song. Yeah. Totally, I can oh, yeah. so I can hear I can see a lot of metalheads not liking the song. But again, why? I don't. To me, it's just maybe maybe you don't like that style of pop, or because it is a lot catchier. This style of um, music that Ghost has with this new song, it's called Dance Macabre, and um, they may have a music video for it. And if you don't like the song, you know what macabre just, means? It's like um, death and gore oh, okay. and stuff like that, right? I don't know. I was asking you. Macabre, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Macabre, yeah, yeah. So it's like a a gore dance. Something like that. I don't know, but uh, anyway, it's a very catchy song. It's different. It's not heavy, and uh, I call it like a solid mix between Kiss and ABBA. Yeah, I like that. It's it's yeah. a good it's, it's a good way of putting it. So uh, yeah, let's jump right into this right now. And uh, here's Dance Macabre by Ghost on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. This is Nicholas Klaus from the band Axe Minister. You're listening to Hammer Smashed. On CFBU 103.7 FM. Hammer Smash 103.7 FM CFBU. Coming off some Axe Minister. And uh, good those fellas, thank you for giving us a nice... Uh, there you go, right there. There it is. Yeah, there it is. Thanks, Nick. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Thank you for that. Uh, giving us that nice little um, radio ID. Appreciate that. Uh, these guys are from Montreal. Some thrash power metal. Uh, and that's a pretty sweet name too, Axe Minister. I actually really like that name. Yeah, we also really like the name of the cool song name. that we chose too. We have the Trials of Hercules. Yep. Yeah, those guys are pretty badass. Um, we got some more uh, badass music to play. Metal Mike, you saw a sweet show mm, this yes. uh, on Friday. Yes, I would like to thank Jillian Underhill for the show she put on this Friday. Um, it was an incredible show, and I'm just going to get right into it because I've already introduced the bands that are on the show. Let's start out with um, our guest from last week, Prism Mine. Yeah, I uh, I want to start out by saying, unfortunately, I couldn't make it to the show, so I'm really, you know, I'm upset I couldn't see those guys, but I'm glad you went, and I'm really excited to look forward to how uh, how the show went. Let's yeah. talk about these guys, Prison Mind, how the show went and everything. When they when we were talking to them, they said that um, they work as hard as they can to make their live show and how they sound live sound identical to the record. And take it from me, I can confirm this. They sounded on point. They sound just like the record. There's, really? There's no like, there's no changes. That's pretty sweet. And they're fantastic. They played, I believe, every song off the record. Did they um, 
Well, because one thing I notice a lot from the record is you can, and we talked about this too last week, is you can hear every instrument. Yeah. Totally. Nothing blend, like they blend in, like as music should, but, you know, nothing like overlapping anything where you can't hear like the drums because the, you know, guitar is too loud, this and that. No, you heard everything very clearly. And was that was the case live? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. They, they were incredible. Everyone was on point. You could, you could really tell the, um, the experience that they have as music as musicians yeah like it really stands out above anything else that you're like you're watching a very talented group of guys they know what they're music. doing they you know they've been around the block once or twice yeah they know well, what they're exactly doing. right and it really shows that with how they sound everything's so tight and like perfect so yeah we have prison mind slade awesome nice. show awesome set and uh, another i want to talk about another band that stood out to me as well the, the whole show was great but uh, another band really stuck out to me in my time when I was there was a uh, Lycanthro, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, they're like power metal, like just like good metal, and um, they were fantastic. Clean vocals, uh, cleanish a bit, yeah. Okay, yeah. and uh, they're ripping it up, tearing it up. Nice. And uh, I got to speak to one of the members. I do forget his name at the moment, but um, we're talking to him, and they're from Ottawa. And they're tearing it up, and they were going on tour. I believe they went to Toronto the next day and played with um, some bands like Black Moor. So, um, okay, cool. And, and, and some other bands that are slipping my mind at the moment. But I got talking to them, and uh, we're going to play something by them in just a minute here. And I will also pr- talk about another band that the gentleman I was speaking to referred me to, and that's a Doom band, another band he's playing with. I believe it's also in Toronto. Is a band called Smolder. Yeah, you sent me those guys today. I took a listen to their music, and man, I dig it. I'm excited so, to play those guys on air. I've yet to hear them. They're on. So wait, so someone from Lycanthro is in Smolder? No, I guess they're playing with them. I okay, guess they're, they're playing friends. with Smolder. Okay, and then um, the way he was describing Smolder, he's like, he's like, oh, they're not really like us. They're like doom metal, kind of like Candlemass. And I was Whoa. like, oh, oh yeah, <laughs> I, was they, like, I love Candlemass, dude. They. <laughs> They kind of are. They're do- this. You know what? This is this is the vibe I got when I was listening to them today. It's heavy metal doom. Oh, that, that style of he- that style of doom, and uh, we love that. So we're really looking forward to hear some of that more later on. And uh, yeah, Lycanthro, we're, we're gonna play some of those guys too. Yeah, we're gonna do some back to back. We're gonna start with Lycanthro and follow that up with Smolder. So uh, what what Lycanthro song do we choose here? Uh, the song we're gonna be playing by these guys is called Into Oblivion. And uh, it is off their album Lycanthro. I think it's one of their first uh, releases. So uh, we're going to get that going right now. Right on. Oh, well, one more thing I want to say while we're on the uh, Geekery thing. I just remembered a question. How did the stage look? I noticed like the, the Geekery have been posting a lot of different pictures lately about the stage with a lot of new lights and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, we got new lights, new colored lights. And then the big, the big speakers on either side. It looks good. Nice. It looks good. Yeah, I'm, that's, that's pretty sweet. All right, now we're going to go back into Lycanthro. And uh, like I said, the song is called Into Oblivion, and it's on Hammer Smashed, 103.7 FM. That right there was Smolder with the song The Sword Woman on Hammer Smash 103.7 FM. Before that, Lycanthro with the song Into Oblivion. And uh, Joe picked up a little interesting fact about Smolder right there. Yeah, it's pretty uh, funny how we figured out who they, they were because we were trying to find out like where they were from. So I was checking out their Facebook, and I noticed in one of the pictures the um, the lead singer was uh, the lady who does the the Banger TV uh, Overkill reviews. There I, you go. I already There's forget that. it. I just, just lost, <laughs> lost my name, but, but um, I lost the page already. But uh, anyway, I recognized her already, and I'm like, oh, that's the, she does the uh, the reviews. And uh, I, which, by the way, if you haven't watched the reviews, I recommend you do because she does a lot of Doom. Like basically any of the new Doom stuff that comes out, she reviews them all, and like most of them the, of the new albums. And uh, yeah, they're really good. Go check those out on yeah. Banger TV. I'd really like to see that band Slumber Dust play with Smolder. Dude, same. <laughs> <laughs> you can throw various on that build too. Yeah, throw various and Smolder and, and Low Orbit and Low Orbit. Yeah. But uh, <laughs> there you go, a couple of Toronto bands and a couple of Niagara Falls bands. It'd be pretty mm-hmm. sweet. But that's how we figured out they're from Toronto because I'm like, ah, she's from Toronto, yeah. so they must be from Toronto. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, no, I definitely dug that. Someone uh, would they? Someone said they were like Candlemas, right? Yeah, the yeah. the the fellow from like Anthro that I was speaking to was uh, talking about. And you know what's funny? He did mention that that she was from Banger TV, and uh, and I was a little refreshed. And uh, one of those things, you know, slips your slips the memory. Yeah. 
But and, yeah, that was pretty cool. And, and you know what? It was good. I really liked it. Her voice was great. Very great. And uh, it was powerful. It had that big Doom presence like Rob Lowe from mm-hmm. Candlemass. And I, another thing, again, with Candlemass is I noticed it had that like that cadence with that that slow cadence that yes. kind of that still had a melody. A lot of Doom bands can have. I'm not going to say any names, but a lot of Doom bands can have a really slow vocal passage or whatever. But it doesn't really have a cadence or uh, a melody to it. It kind of just kind of just goes straight. Mm-hmm. She didn't have that, which I dug. She had some melody to yeah. it. And I'd like to mention uh, before that, Lycanthro with Into Oblivion was awesome. Just oh yeah, brutal. dude. Power when metal. he when he came out with that. Ah! Yeah, <laughs> with the King Diamond. Yeah, it's so awesome. I loved it, yeah. Dude, that gets me every time. When If I'm listening to a heavy metal tune, and it's, you know, the riffs are going, the voice is pumping, and all of a sudden, something like that just comes out of nowhere. Just, whoa. Not like that Rob Halford, like like Bruce Dickinson, like high-pitched note, like note that they can Yeah, make. just out of nowhere. You know why? Because not a lot of people can do that. Yeah. And sound good. Yeah, That's and tough sound to do. good. It is tough. And when you do it, it's, a, it's like the... Uh, the whammy bar effect. Yep. Just something that just zoom, coming out of nowhere and just... So, uh, you big. know what doesn't sound good, Joe? What doesn't sound good? It's some Mike? background music because I'm going to complain about something. Oh, boy. Here we go. It's time for the Metal Mike complaint section on Hammer Smash 103.7. It's about when Metal Mike doesn't like things going on in the world. And he complains about them to you. Mm-hmm. What are we going on with today, Metal Mike? All right. So a little bit outside of the metal genre, but still hitting that hard rock scene. I want to talk about that new cover that's out there with the, with the band The Bad Wolves and uh, their cover of Zombie by the Cranberries. They are actually supposed to be a metal super, super group. Not really too sure about any of the, uh, the bands. They're not really very popular, but there's a lot of metal bands, members in metal bands that are in that group. So they're a metal band, actually. Okay. So here's why I don't like this cover. First of all, I'm a little bit biased already because I'm not a fan of the original song. Yeah, I will agree with you right there. I, I, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that song, like the "Zombie" yeah, by I'm, the Cranberries. I'm I not a fan of never her, liked uh, it. Foghorn sounding vocals. That's that's how. It rem- that's what it reminds me of. Wow, like a foghorn. That's good. I, I, that's <laughs> a, I'll, I'll leave it at that. I agree with you there. Okay. So, but what what makes me even more mad is I know exactly how this song came to be written. It wasn't like, hey man, let's just cover the zombies or zombie because it's it's a great song. That's not how the song came to be written. I guarantee they're sitting there in the band room, right? And they're talking. And one of the line in the song, it's like, um, it's the same old thing since 1916 or something like that. Um, they changed it to 2018, and, and don't they? And they changed it to 2018. Why did they do that? I guarantee they're sitting in the band room and they go, whoa, if we just do this song, I'll say 2018 and it'll be like, a statement, man. Yeah. And, and they're like, oh, it'll be a statement. And people will like think we're, we got a message, but really it's just yeah. the same lyrics it's, from you're just, the Cranberries. You're just changing the name of the year. Well, and I guarantee that's why they did it. Like, I, can, I'm going to add to that, Metal Mike. Yeah. And I think they're also, they also did this and said, oh, wow, she just died. And uh, that's pretty big in the news right now. What if we cover it? That would get us pretty big as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe, you know. Maybe a cash grab, you know, just to get... Because, yeah. dude, they blew up from that song in the same time when she died. So, um, I don't know. There's don't, some greasy things going I don't, on. I don't like it every time I hear it. And what sucks, too, is that it does get stuck in my head. It does And it drives lot. me even... Like, it drives me bat crap crazy. I think that was also the point of the original song, was to get st- stuck in your head. Because that's the lyric, right? In your head. Yeah. yeah. Whatever. Something like that. It's... it's I don't like it, Ugh. and I don't like how they're using the year to excel it. Yeah, I don't like how they're <laughs> using 2018 to sell it, and they're using the riding off the coattails of this lady's death. Yep, that ain't know. right. Yeah, no, you didn't see a bunch of covers come out of Chris Cornell, and you know after his, which by the way is passing, just uh, happened. Yep, recently. Yep. But rest in peace to Chris Cornell. He's, he's the best. He's awesome. He's yeah. So let's on a positive note. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about something, something passed away. Chris Cornell. He's That's like, not a positive note. It's still a downer. No, but he's you know he's great. Yeah, yeah, he yeah. Is. No, I'm, the, I'm like being I'm being positive. I'm being positive there instead <laughs> okay. of complaining. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, I mean, yeah, song man, it sucks. Yeah. Uh, okay. So what do we got some music? What are we doing for music here? Um. Oh, dude, we got some new clutch. Whoa! Yeah, that's clutch. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. How are we doing for commercials, Metal Mike? We good for time over here? I should play a couple of those. So here's what we're going to do. 
I'm gonna play you some advertisements, some commercials, and do some things that we have to do for you. Oh yeah. And then we're gonna play some clutch. And then we're gonna get in some graveyard and we're gonna talk about that as well. Yeah, we're gonna play two new tunes back to back. And they're more on the rock and roll side. Yeah. So uh yeah. Stay tuned, get rock, get dirty, have that dart ready, have that whiskey sour in your mouth, and uh it's gonna get smoky. On Hammer Smash with 3.7 FM. Hammer Smashed, 103.7 FM CFBU. We're coming off some two new fresh tunes right out of the oven. They're still warm. We're coming off some clutch. Give me the keys. Give, Give me the them. keys, I'm sorry. Give me the keys. Give me the keys. They're on the table. <laughs> Pick them up. This is like a dad thing to say. Hey, give me the keys. It is. Yeah. Hey, give me the keys. Hey, what are the keys? It is. Uh, no, I, I like Clutch, man. We were talking about that, like you were saying. He's got that whiskey, whiskey voice. That, like, like whiskey. That guy at the bar. You know what I mean? The guy's sitting at the bar. He's drinking a whiskey, and then, no matter what you say to him, he's gonna tell you a story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Let, me, let me tell you a story. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're just like thinking, like waiting of what they're gonna. Say. They're not even listening to what you no. said. They're just waiting. Yeah, it doesn't for, matter for that for you to stop talking. So you go, all right. Let me tell you a story about what you just said, but mine. <laughs> but be way completely better. off topic of what you said. <laughs> I got a story to tell. <laughs> uh, and then after that, we had uh, graveyard, which I said earlier. It's not metal. It's oh, it's not not heavy, uh, but it's still metal, and I'll tell you why. Because it's classic rock. Mm. Classic rock is still metal, yep. and I will argue that point until I die. Uh, it, you know, the Doors is metal, ACDC is metal, Black Sabbath is metal. Yeah, like Cl- classic rock is metal. Cla- that's where it comes from. Yeah, and uh, you know, you could still hear the notes that you would hear in like a metal song, but just not distorted. Right, right, right away. Well, what was the song you compared it to when you uh, heard it? Something off Never Say Die. Air Dance. Air Dance. Yeah. Dan, 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 dan. You know, it's great. And then we just ended up speaking about... <laughs> and then we started talking about <laughs> fairies wear boots. <laughs> <laughs> just spoke about Black Sabbath almost then. That's right. Yeah, yeah. We, we, were, uh, we were getting into, like, the graveyard, talking about, bla- um, you know, classic rock, and then we just completely segued that conversation into Black Sabbath. That happens more than I'd like to admit. Happens a lot. <laughs> like, There's a lot of times when we're just talking about something, and it would just... That conversation always, like, circles around the Sabbath. Because... It's the almighty Oz. It's the, it's the godfathers, the forefathers of metal. Well, he is, and you can always tie something back to Sabbath. And again, with Sabbath, like no matter how many times you listen to him, you're always going to hear something new. Yep. Yeah. Al- always. <laughs> Every time. Hey, you know what? Last last talk bit of the night, because we're at the end of the show right now. Let's quickly uh, throw this in there. Metal Mike got a new tattoo on Friday. Oh, yeah. Yeah, look at that. <laughs> Black Sabbath tattoo. <laughs> I got the uh, the Fallen Angel, which actually first made its uh, appearance on the Never Say Die record. Funny how we uh, talked about that. Really? Yep. I was looking up. I didn't know that. I was looking up. Um, his name is Henry, by the way. Get out of town. Yeah, and, I didn't know uh, that. Yeah, and um, that's the, pretty cool. The origin. No one actually like truly knows the origin of that symbol. It just I, I thought it was the shirt, right? Yeah. It's always on a shirt, and yeah, and but it showed up. I guess it's on the Never Say Die record, and then they used it a lot during the Dio era of Sabbath. And then also the live album, uh, We Sold Our Soul for Rock and Roll. Yes, you're it's right. On, it's on the, that red, as well. the red one. Oh, that's cool, man. Yeah, I didn't know that. And you know, it's uh, both on Never Say Die is like. They're both iconic shirts, you know, the gas mask face mm-hmm. guys. Which is interesting, right? Because that wasn't their highest selling record. Dude, but it's, like, but it's so good. But that but that the face, like the the gas mask airplane guys became like a face for Black Sabbath all the way until like their last record, like thirteen. Like the on that that was on the new shirts. Yeah. It was, it, it was, yeah, everybody knows that shirt when that's just you know, It was in Iron Man. Tony Stark it, it, Tony Stark War, that's right. Yeah, and yeah. Like, it, it's it's just interesting that they chose like an album art from one of their lesser known Aussie era albums. Maybe they understand how good it is, and they yeah. just <laughs> they're, wanted... they're low key trying to push that album. Yeah, again. like get, like come on, you guys missed this. That's a, that's <laughs> like, a great album. It yeah. really is. There's People a lot sleep of on that stuff. album. I was saying, um, a lot a lot of my favorite Sabbath tunes are the funky Sabbath tunes, and they got a lot of good ones on there. Mm-hmm. Swing in the chain yep. with um, Bill Ward on vocals. Over to you, Air Dance, Junior's Eyes. Oh, well, Junior's Eyes is a masterpiece. Air Dance is a masterpiece as well. It, like, where did the Air Dance <laughs> come from? Yeah, oh, right. It's crazy. So good. It's so it's just jazz. It's not even metal. It's just jazz. Well, there you go. Black Sabbath man has so many songs that aren't heavy or metal at all, but they're, they're still, metal. But they're still metal. So I rest yeah. my case. Classic rock is metal. So we just uh, <laughs> we came full circle on that. And yeah. on that note, we're gonna end with some metal, aren't we? Yeah, we are. We're gonna end with some metal. We're done now. We got the laborer song going on. Mm. Gotta get mm. ready for work. <laughs> 
in the morning. Except you don't, because there's no work, because it's Victoria Day. So oh. unless you do, then you're getting double time, time, and time pay. Yeah. yeah, that's me. I work at five tomorrow, so I get time and a half. That's all right. You got the day off tomorrow? <gasps> yes. Yeah, yeah, nice. Yeah. So that'll be cool. You don't have to worry about going home late tonight. That's good. Uh, yeah, we're done, though, for the show, so, uh, whoa. Thank you for tuning in to Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM CFPU. Uh, we got a lot of new tunes that we played today. If you're just tuning in late, you missed all those tunes. And a lot of Canadian. Yeah, so a lot you, of Canadian. If you want to hear and support your local country bands, not country bands, but your country's bands, <laughs> your country's band, then check out what we played on the show on our Facebook page, Hammer Smash. CFBU, well, Hammer Smash 103.7 CFBU. You can check all the songs out there. You can check out our podcast, which I'll probably post sometime during the week. Um, you'll see that on our Facebook page as well. Um, go like some of the bands that we've played. Support them, because they're all awesome. Yep, yeah, they're all great, so go check those bands out. Um, we tag all the bands, so you can go check out their Facebook as well. Yep. Give them a like, shoot them a message, say, hey, we heard you and we like you, because that's, you know, bands like that. They want you to know that you, you know you heard their music and absolutely that, that's the whole reason why they do that and that you know especially with all these Canadian bands as well and, and killer bands you probably never heard of deserve the recognition especially if they're awesome and you really like them and you want them to come down support them dude great point right there if you like a, a band and you want them to come to this area you want them to come to Toronto give them a reason to yeah give them a reason to come down to this area Yep. Yeah, that's, simple as that. That's a great way to do it. Uh, you know, hit up the band camp, hit up everything, like them up on Facebook, and uh, keep the metal rocking and rolling. Yeah, as Derek would say, rock and roll. That's rock and roll. That's right, rock and roll. That's rock, rock and roll. We <laughs> need to get Derek on the show. We do. We got to get Derek on. Derek the is show. not metal at all. But, no, he's not. But he's a, he's a great. Hey, he's he a plays guy. at the uh, uh, Pixel in Pixel Planet. Pixel Planet he plays at uh, the Geekery a lot. So yeah, Pixel Planet's great though. They are great. They yeah, are yeah, great. yeah, yeah. Awesome stuff. Um, rock and roll. Rock and roll. <laughs> Anyways, we got some metal for you. Yeah, we're going to end Close with, with one uh, one last tune. And uh, let's end with some dark tranquility because it's Michael Stane's birthday today. And uh, quick little story about Michael Stane. I went to go see him with uh, with Laura at, um, when was it? I don't remember. Remember when I went to go see, uh, it was Warbringer and Dark Tranquility and Striker? These guys right here. Oh, my God, look at this. I'm wearing the shirt that I bought at the show. <laughs> I'm wearing it right now. Crazy. Oh, that's right. Mind blowing. Anyway, um, you know, we were just like talking about like Michael Stane, me and Laura, as we're like walking to the venue. And we're just like, oh, it'd be really cool if we like saw them or something. Like, what do you know? He's right in front of us crossing the street. And she just goes, oh, hi, Michael. And he, he remembered her because he's seen her a bunch of times. And that's, he, it's cool like that when they, uh, when they come back. Dark Tranquility is one of those bands that comes back a lot to Toronto because the fans in the area let them know they like it. And, you know, they talk to them and, like that ties into our point. You want a band to come around, you know, give them a reason to come around. Yeah. Dark Tranquility, they're coming around like at least twice a year. These guys are from Sweden, so hey, what's you know, up, give them a give them a, give them a reason to come by. So we're gonna end with some dark tranquil dark tranquility. There we go. And it's Michael Stane's birthday. So off of the album, we are the void. I got at the point of ignition. And I'm Hammer Smash Joey. Metal Mike. And as always. May the metal be with you. And also with you, Dark Tranquility on Hammer Smash, 103.7 FM. Do not hide your song.